Hello everybody, today you're watching the Tropics Topics of September 2nd, 2018. Before I begin the video, I apologize for my voice sounds a little rascally right now. I'm going through a little bit of a, you know, early fall cold right now, so I think I should be fine over the next few days. Um, this is our really our first update in quite a while since the beginning of July. That's because there really hasn't been that much activity in the Atlantic apart from a few, you know, high latitude north tropical, north tropical cyclones like Debbie and Ernesto. They didn't really impact land and were short-lived, pretty weak. Uh, but now we finally, finally in quotation marks, have some activity to watch in the tropics. Uh, those being Tropical Storm Florence, which is a moderate tropical storm that's weakening with 50 mile an hour winds and a pressure of 1,000 millibars. And the system that we're going to talk a little bit more about today, Invest 91L, which has a 50% chance formation in the next 48 hours and an 80% chance, a high chance in the next five days. And this one will be impacting the Gulf Coast of the United States uh, later on this week. Uh, but before we get into that, let's just kind of take a look at the broad satellite view. Um, here's Florence, all the way out here in the eastern Atlantic, really far away from any land areas, just past the Cabo Verde Islands about two days ago, and it's not forecast to impact any land areas in the next five days. Uh, but we will still discuss it a little bit. Um, and then, of course, 91L all the way out here over the southern Bahamas. Um, and you can kind of see that it not really all that much else going on. Again, this has been a pretty quiet season so far. And, you know, September is probably going to be a bit more active, but we'll just have to wait and see. Um, and if there, you see a new video by me, that means that there is more to see. Uh, so first, let's get into Florence here. Uh, not looking particularly healthy. Today. Yesterday, it kind of had sort of a mid-level eye feature, though. We'll still count it a couple of a little bit. Uh, but now it's kind of succumbing to the dry and stable air mass kind of surrounding it. You can see the low-level center here on the satellite loop and also all of this convection displaced north. And even if you look a little closely, you might see a little bit of a swirl right in this area. That might be the mid-level center. So it's it's definitely possible that this thing might be decoupling uh, from its more heightened vortexes. And you can see that it's moving in a general west-northwest pattern away from the Cabo Verde Islands, which it impacted as a depression and a potential tropical cyclone uh, late last week. And you can see that it's coming into even more dry and stable air. All this kind of puffy and scattered clouds, these kind of mid-level cloud features, These are this is all a very stable environment for the system. And that is not favorable for intensification. Now, will it matter if, if it intensifies in the next five days? Not really, because it won't be imp impacting any land areas but it's still quite remarkable to see. In fact, you can see it a little bit here. You can see better the overall Saharan air layer, the dust uh, concentrations here in this graphic from Simis. And you can see all this big area of you know yellows and even scattered like you know reds and pinks all in front of Florence's path and even some you know getting inhaled into the system itself. And uh, that is obviously not favorable for tropical development. You can kind of see that here as well. Let me just go back to the beginning of the run. Uh, you can kind of see that here, a very, a very large area of just not very favorable, uh, precipitable water amounts, basically just humidity and dew points for the storm to actually move into. Um, and you can kind of see that kind of levels off the intensity a little bit. It might be, this model might be a bit bullish with the actual intensity. Uh, but you can see it kind of starts to back off, uh, but it doesn't really start to intensify. Now, why is that? Well, we have... This is 60 hours out, so this is Tuesday afternoon. Here's the storm. It might or might not be 987 millibars. It'll probably be a bit weaker than that if I had to guess. Um, you can see here that we have this big trough, what we call the Tropical Upper Tropospheric Trough, or the Tutlow for short. And this is not favorable for tropical cycles to move into because this induces a lot of vertical wind shear as, move, as they move into it. And basically, Florence will be coming in from a perpendicular angle to the flow of this of the Tutlow, and that will probably end up shearing it. Now, once it gets onto the other side of the shear, it could be in a much more favorable area for intensification. Sea surface temperatures are higher, and overall, just a better environment. Because right now, a lot of the stable air mass over here is because the sea surface temperatures out in this area aren't particularly high. Now, are they usually really high, like 29 degrees Celsius in this area? No, but sea surface temperatures have been running below or at average across the entire main development region so far this season and if that does pan out then if it does move out of this area and it does get into an area of warmer shear 
of warmer waters, excuse me, it might have a chance to develop. But here, so here's a National Hurricane Center forecast showing it moving into the open Atlantic and, you know, not really intensifying hurricane strength, basically maintaining 50 mile per hour winds and may try to intensify towards the end of the run. That's still a bit uncertain. Any impacts to land are still uncertain. Model guidance has been all over the place. Uh, but if you live in Bermuda, just keep it up. Just keep a wary eye on the storm just in case. Uh, if you're in the United States, in the Caribbean, I can just monitor it, with, but it's not really something you should be overly concerned about at this time of year. All right, so that's Florence. Uh, now we're going to get into the bigger concern, which is Invest 91L, which was just designated this morning uh, in the in the open uh, southwestern Atlantic over here near the Bahamas. And this one is relatively concerning for me because of some because of one, the shape is already looking pretty well defined, and two, the models have been pretty consistent on it impacting the Gulf Coast of the United States. Now you can see here that it's not a tropical cyclone yet. You can see at the surface you have the flow coming in right here and then kind of kinking. You can't really see it, but it's kinking up and then moving back down and then right back out again with the trades. And that tells me that there's a pretty amplified wave axis in here. Now, as it continues to organize, which it is currently doing, it might have a chance to intensify into a tropical depression, uh, maybe as early as the Florida Straits right, as it moves through either southern, the very southernmost portion of the Florida Peninsula or the Keys. Uh, either way, it will be a big rainmaker for the area, regardless of formation. Now, what's going on with the storm? You can kind of see there's some cirrus clouds that are being blown off towards the north, and that's because, if we can see here in this water vapor loop from uh, the Marshall Space Flight Center, you can see that we have a big trough right here. Uh, it's a little less defined than it was yesterday because it's beginning to kind of split into two. Uh, the first portion down here, kind of near uh, southern Florida, is inducing all this northerly shear. Um, and then we have another little portion up here off the coast of Georgia and South Carolina. And that will move into those coastlines pretty soon uh, and won't be as big of a player. Now this low, you can kind of see it a little bit. You can see this area of dry air starting to move south a little bit. And that should be the case. It should move south into western Cuba as this storm, as our invest, 91L, moves northwest into southern Florida or the Keys. Now this is this is essential because if this happens then the shear decreases, and if shear decreases, the convection can become more organized and can help the storm become a tropical depression a bit quicker, or even a tropical storm for that matter. Uh, but either way, it won't be particularly strong moves into Florida, uh, but that might not be the case for the Gulf Coast of Mexico, uh, Gulf, Gulf of Mexico coast, excuse me. Uh, now, why is this whole thing happening? Well, so here's basically, here's our storm right here, 91L. Um, and we have kind of a kind of a ridge out here, just kind of planted over here over the Carolinas. And this is kind of inducing this steering flow out of the uh, east-southeast. That's going to steer it towards the northwest into probably what's going to be the central Gulf Coast. Anywhere basically from, say, Apalachicola towards Mobile, New Orleans, all the way to, you know, even like the central Gulf Coast of Texas need to be monitoring the system very closely. And even if you're in southern Florida, you need to be monitoring the storm very closely. And that's because we this storm can move basically anywhere from those areas that I mentioned. Now, the most likely track is something that moves through the very southernmost Florida Keys or the upper Keys and then up towards potentially into the New Orleans area. Uh, but I have seen some model runs that try to take it a bit farther towards the west and maybe along the central coast of Louisiana or potentially even towards the Houston-Galveston area. Uh, but that is still to be seen. Now, once it is in this general area, where does it go? Well, the models have been kind of split a little bit. So here's the GFS model. Here's, here's our disturbance right here. And on Monday, Labor Day, it's moving through southern Florida. And you can see it does try to get some of the energy kind of compiled, and that's why it's a bit more orange and a little red but you can see here in this wind barbs that it's not a closed low quite yet and you can see here this is monday evening it's out over the gulf just to the to the west of uh naples and you can see here it's trying to consolidate a little bit more as you can see with this isobar surrounding this area of consolidated vorticity and you can see here as it moves towards louisiana this becomes a bona fide tropical storm now if it were to become a tropical storm the name it would it would gain it would be gordon uh, that's the G name, uh, but that's uh, something that we'll you know, keep tabs on once that actually happens. 
and then the model shows it moving right into Louisiana, pretty near the New Orleans area, the Mississippi, uh, Louisiana coastline border. And as that happens, it's not going to be particularly a big wind maker more than likely, but it will be a big rain maker. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in a second. Uh, and you can see here, it kind of starts to curve north pretty much into uh, Arkansas and then up into Missouri. Now, why is that happening? Uh, well, you can see here uh, that we're going to have uh, this trough out here that forms over the uh, Pacific Northwest, and that's going to dip down into this area of the country, so it's going to kind of align itself somewhere like this, and this will probably pull whatever 91L is out, up, and into the Midwest. Uh, some of the earlier models, particularly the ECMWF yesterday, were wanting to continue to bring it. Uh, this right here isn't 91L. This is a separate disturbance, so I apologize. That's kind of confusing. This is 91L out here, um, but it's trying to pull 91L along the coast into Texas, and in fact, it was stalling it pretty much over the Austin-San Antonio area for quite a while yesterday. Now, I don't really think this is a very likely solution now because the ECMWF is also trying to curve it a little bit more like this. In fact, we can see that right here. Uh, here's our here's our storm right here. This is likely a tropical depression, borderline tropical storm. Uh, moves in a little bit farther west than the uh, GFS, and then moves it into North Texas. That's probably near Tyler, and then kind of kicks it out towards the northeast. Um, pretty much over you know, Texarkana and then right up into Missouri. So, and then you can see here Florence at the very end of the run, but please kind of ignore that. That's a very long range forecast. Don't, don't get too concerned about that. Um, and then, you know, either way, if this does curve up into this area of the country, like the GFS is saying, or if it does kind of go a bit west into Texas and then curve up kind of like this, there's going to be heavy rain either way. As you can see here in the WPC forecast, areas of, that's about five inches of rain in general across Louisiana, and even a bigger bullseye near Port Arthur Beaumont of about seven inches. Now, what we really don't want to see is something that stalls down here, and that could happen if, if this trough isn't amplified enough, and if this ridge out here kind of continues to build a little bit, and we have something that kind of builds in underneath this, and we have our storm kind of nestled in here. This could be a big problem uh, for flooding in Texas. Now, I don't want to. Now, that's not a very likely solution at this point, but it's something that we just might need to keep a wary eye on, just in case something like this happens. Uh, but the most likely tracks are the ones I mentioned earlier, moving into Louisiana generally, and then curving north after that. So that's the Atlantic activity. I briefly want to touch on uh, Typhoon Jebby in the Western Pacific. Uh, this behemoth of a storm right here. Uh, previously was the category 5 uh, to the west of the Mariana Islands, a peak with 150 knot winds at 175 miles an hour, and it's now currently a, I believe it is a low-end category 4, uh, but it is currently trekking to the north northeast towards Japan. Now, will it be this intensity when it hits Japan? Probably not, uh, but it will likely be at least a category 2 typhoon by the time it makes it into this portion of Honshu. I don't think it will move directly into Tokyo, but it's, it is possible. I haven't really checked the latest forecasts, all the two. I haven't really gone into a big analysis recently, but that is a possibility. Uh, either way, Japan should be looking out for, you know, what you expect in normal typhoons, you know, gusty winds, heavy rainfall, flooding potentially. This has been a very wet summer for Japan so far. They've had a lot of typhoon impacts uh, this, um, this summer so far. And Jebi looks to be posing the biggest threat so far. Uh, than any of the other typhoons. Most of them were pretty weak by the time they approached. Uh, so that's the general tropical scene. Uh, I'll have another video update in case 91L becomes anything more significant. Uh, and again, Florence is just a feature that probably won't be impacting any land areas in the near future. Um, I probably won't be able to be around tomorrow because of the holiday and then school, but then I will see if I can make updates later on just in case 91L gets, uh, gets enough traction going. Alright, that's it for today. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to stay weather alert during this time.